Hello, hello, Tyler Pryden here. I hope everything is going well. You know what? I haven't been creating as consistently as possible as I'd like to. I appreciate anyone who subscribed, who's helped grow this channel. I crossed that thousand threshold. Everything was very exciting. I did that while I was in India. I was in India for 60 days. And during that time, I filmed a bunch of stuff. I'm a DSLR. I brought it. I shot all these great shots. I haven't even opened my camera. I haven't even looked back. I thought I was going to make all these videos about India. I have not done that at all yet. <laughs> but I noticed there the, during that time, first of all, it was just difficult to create. My microphone didn't work and then it was lost in luggage. You're all just overstimulated. You're traveling constantly. I had a ton of stuff going on in life and fell behind on that consistent content creation that was pretty good when I was sitting in my office here every day. And I'm now back and I still haven't, I've only been back a week or so, so I can't excuse my, I don't have to punish myself too much, but I'm still finding the ability or the, the capacity to create has lowered a bit. And you know, what was interesting to me when I see performance in videos, it's generally because I'm creating a video on one topic that I focus, I narrow in on it. And that's because I had done some experiments early in my first round of creating videos for this channel and just like previously on YouTube. And I found if I create on a bunch of topics, it creates sort of misalignment with the intent of the, the title and then the video as well. And then just because there's multiple topics, it doesn't rank in the same way. So if you'd say, hey, I'm talking about a Silicon Valley bank and GPT and character AI, a company manager. If you, if you do a video on that and you talk about all those topics and then you put all those in the headline, they'll compete each other on rankings of that title and then none of them doesn't really rank it doesn't really perform well and for that reason i started creating videos on a single topic and and then i found when i did that for example one of my best ranking videos is what is prompt engineering i was able to then see performance and as an example that prompt engineering video i think ended up with 18,000 we're almost coming up on 20,000 views on that one alone and so i was like holy i can see the power of it and it's actually still look i mean it's biased because my system here but the top ranking video 20,000 views on this with that and just one video not even that great of quality or anything but it had that impact and i tried to create a video on character ai yesterday and that sort of question was like what is character ai and it was it didn't really suffice in answering that question in the video and uh, i just felt like a bit of a failure because I, I talked about the fundraise i talked about a bunch of things that were going on but at the core level i didn't really answer that question and i thought there's a need to create single topic videos that are well done. And there's also been a goal for me to create better videos overall. I've made slight adjustments on that with sound quality. I don't think my bl blank background is working necessarily right now. I actually got a holder with a green screen and thing and a couple other backgrounds that I'm going to play around with and experiment with. I'm still not sure they're ideal yet, but you might see it change a little bit. And still, at least it's clean. I've got the DSLR on instead of the the, the webcam, which I had been using previously. And so there are some changes in that regard that are working. Um, but I, what I really wanted to do, and this is a long winded way, I'm four minutes in here and I apologize. I'm really sorry. Is basically say I'm doing something a little different today, which is I'm doing just a random sort of random thought video here. I'm guessing this won't really rank that well, it won't perform, but there are some subscribers who maybe check out my videos because, well, I don't know if they like me, but they like the thoughts or the things that I talk about around some of the topics. And I don't think the audience or the following is the subscribers are big enough to really make these kind of videos successful. I think it's really important on me to create videos on topics, but I am here I am anyways. And so I've got a couple, I've got a little Google doc here and I should be hiding this a little bit because I also have it with other things. You know what? It doesn't really matter that much. I'll pull it up so we can see it on the screen. Now I can zoom in a little bit because I'm a good guy. Let's see. So just a couple random thoughts here. On, and you know what? I realized if I really wanted to, I can clip these. If there's anything good out, I can clip them and, and make them into separate individuals or videos or even, well, I guess shorts. Shorts isn't really the best because I'm not in the aspect ratio of shorts. But anyways, we have it. We're there. First thing, I'm going to stick away from technology for a minute as much as that might be a surprise to you. Got 
Tyler the Creator. We got, first of all, screw you for taking the name Tyler, but video dog tooth out here, pretty crazy growth in one day, 1.6 million. This was a song that in video that's coming off, coming out, it was basically supposed to be on his last album, Call Me If You Get Lost, which fantastic album. I listened to it this morning at the gym, actually. And uh, and one set, I'll pull that up just as our reference. I'll ref put the references in the video because I like to do that. Call Me If You Get Lost. Oh, cool. It's, it's got a website. Smart. Always oh, smart guy. There you go. Dog tooth. There's the estate sale is coming on here. And again, I have anger towards him because his name, Tyler, the creator is truly the perfect name. If you are someone named Tyler and a creator, which I consider myself. So really monopolized my existence, but it was also extremely talented has been a force in music and culture for a long time. And love the way that he's done both of it and has also done some really great things for lgbtq community people would conflict with that statement based on his earlier statements but i i think that's no longer true and pretty validated in that regards and just done a really good job with how he's moved through his career evolved as an artist really talented overall and then um released this song yesterday as the announcement for the estate sale and was a banger. Now, I'm still too hesitant to play any song on the YouTube channel. One of my favorite channels is Turn the Table. I'll pull that up as well to Turning the Tables, which is basically a father-son turning the tables. Yeah, here we go. These guys, shout out to them. They are Canadian based. Just did a reaction to the Carter 3, which was awesome. And really just, yeah, father, son doing reviews. And it's just skyrocketed. I was, I think I came across them when I'm 100,000 followers on you, subscribers on YouTube now at almost 600,000 and just do great full length videos. But what's interesting is they also play almost the entire song, almost the entire album in these videos. I'm like, how are they not getting penalized, getting videos taken down. How are they making money off this? All those arms to me as I watch these videos. And then these guys have, I think, inspired an entire new generation of like <laughs> dad reacts or mother reacts or grammar reacts. And obviously there was earlier videos of that, but definitely a little bit of a re renaissance of popularity in these and a lot of people attributing that. And they've even had some artists show up, BB No Money and some stuff on the channel. So great, great personalities here and just started doing this personally and then grew the channel quite significantly. That's why I'm what I'm trying to say, to get back to is that I, I'm not going to play any samples of this because I don't want to, because I'm worried about getting demonetized or things like that. Now I'm allowed to, because this is a random thought episode and that's what feels like it gives me a little bit of grace here and desire to record this video is, let me see, is bump, bounce around on topics so I can do that and you can't really get mad at me. And if you choose not to watch this video, it's just going to get low retention and it's not going to rank anyway and no one's going to see it and YouTube's going to penalize me anyway. So it doesn't really matter, but I'm on here. I'm back. ChatGPT, of course, I'm here. Sucks. It sucks to be talking about it. Too many people talking about it. Too many threads about it. Here's how to do prompts. Here's how to do things. What I'm interested in is the existential crisis that this is giving people, including myself. Now, what I want to ask GPT is, what do you tell people who have existential crises, I think crises is plural, about GPT impacting society, the economy, jobs, people's people. Oh my God, you're watching me type live, lively. Oh man, I guess it will co correct livelihoods, careers, and purpose. It really making me nervous type when I use old Grammarly for that. And I knew I shouldn't have got that. Let's see what the answer is. Let's see, see how they feel, because I think this is something that I'm, as I'm talking to people, even startups, people who are very technical, even who are seeing the amount of like work, like the amount of even like the co-pilot, how much that of programming that is doing for people. I think there are a lot of sort of concerns right now. And I was saying to my partner on the business at Speak AI, this is like the first time that I felt personally where my vision over multiple years originally started Speak AI, shout out Speak AI. If you don't know it, we can see that this response is coming back. About 25,000 people using Speak AI, the goal would turn your language data into insights, do it fast and with no code. The question was, or what I was saying was that it was, I was typically pretty clear on 
what my vision was. And that vision has actually become quite true in many senses. Now we've leaped and bounds over with LLMs and transformers and what we're now able to do with GPT and sort of transformer models and large language models and embeddings. But overall, the vision was relatively crystal clear. And I think some of the reasons why I didn't necessarily execute on it were just lack of execution, my own skill set, fundraising, lots of reasons why I personally wasn't as successful at capturing. Not that we haven't been successful at all. We have 25,000 signups on. We have growing company and all this stuff, but still not the unicorn or anything like that. And so this is the first time I'm really feeling a little bit unclear about um, the future and where we're headed. And I was met with a friend today and shared the same thing. And I, and I was saying, like, I'm feeling this way. I could see that he got, then got worried because he, he is, has, he's talking to lots of people. And I think he has some trust in my sort of thought process. And when I shared that I have some concerns, I think then that created concern for him. And so I realized I don't really want to be a fear monger, but I shared about this sort of this existential crisis that myself and I'm seeing other people having about some of these things that it's not necessarily an irrational one. And again, maybe it's emotional, maybe because it's eroding some of these or possibly eroding some of these things that people have built. And here's the answer right from GPT itself. So let's take this, acknowledge concerns. So yeah, that's true. They come from a place of genuine concern, show empathy, highlight the benefits. So yes, amazing benefits. I agree with that. And I think there's a lot of that can come out of this. And I think there's a lot of, yeah, automating repetitive tasks and dangerous, ta dangerous tasks, mundane, boring, but there's a lot of people who thrive on some of that. And this, one of these terms is like uh, rep cognitive repetitive tasks, which is somewhat interesting, which I think people thought that they had many years ahead of being able to do that with really no change to their business and realizing that could possibly be eroded very quickly. And and so that next discuss the importance of adaptability. Yeah, great. It feels great. Hey, time to adapt. Yeah, I think we know that, but People don't like change. Not all people like change, especially as you get older. So how do you feel about that, GPT? And then policymakers, yeah, we don't really trust policymakers. I don't think most people do. Active participation, I don't think we're able to be that active. I think most people feel excluded from the people who are building this technology, funding this technology. I don't think we're able to be that active in it. And then are you sure about human value that tools are designed to assist and augment human capabilities, not replace them. Empathy, creativity, judgment. Some humans aren't that great at empathy. A lot of humans aren't that creative. And overall, we're generally using, some people listen to their gut. Judgment is, I would say, generally is regarded well when backed with sort of stats and analysis. And so lots of people are using systems like this to run analysis. And so that is my counterpoints to this. If I could use a moment to like, I guess, I don't like, the, I guess the term would be steel men. The opposite is that we have a beautiful future as humans ahead here. I'm not sure that I would actually put that on the side of GPT isn't going to replace us. I actually don't think, <laughs> I don't see that. And maybe it's not the, that exact version of GPT, but maybe large, lots of large language models, custom built, and then our own personal ones as they scale into huge enterprises. And so we all have our own personalized and highly efficient ass assistants that are then working for us and doing a lot of the things that we would be doing previously and now. My thought is that the steel men would be that, or the positive look view on that is that is going to make our quality of life much better in ways that we don't have to do those tasks. But it also frees up and weighs lots of time, which some people don't do that well with time. I think, I think you, I think then you maybe eliminate some purpose. And I think in that, you know, even as I'm trying to look at the positive, uh, well, there, I think there will be a lot of new jobs in ways that creative we're saying like rise of prompt engineers and things like that. I think there will be still, uh, there's gonna be a fundamental elimination of something here and a paradigm shift, a transformation that will occur. Now, I don't think I, I, I don't think I was successful <laughs> in that Steelman, but maybe a couple on the positive there as I, I guess, look at it and think about it. You know, what I'll say here is that with speaking, I, again, like, Great business, built it, does some fantastic things. It's actually a pretty sweet platform. And in, in multiple cases, I can tell you what's interesting is it's hard to 
go with too many discussions that are not about it. And that I would say is a bit annoying as someone who's built, like we have this dashboard. What am I trying to say? We go into just a video here. We've got, mm, sorry, Michelle, you got transcript, we've got insights. What was What's interesting is that this, we were trying to figure out how could we extract in like insights from language data. And so we built with tools of a previous paradigm, which was one of them was called named entity recognition, which was the extraction of keywords and phrases like you can see here. And you can see, oh, okay, this was a keyword. I can jump to that specific moment. Great. You can analyze things by sentiment and find the most positive and negative moments in sentiment. And that was great. And I could go at a top level and I could see across an entire data set. Oh, here's the sort of trends that are emerging here is all that stuff. Awesome. It was really fantastic. I can click, I can see mentions of America in an entire data set. Great. A lot of powerful applications in research and customer analysis and market research, all these great things. And then all of a sudden this paradigm shift starts where I go, oh, here, I want a prompt and I want to give me a bullet point list summary of it, bullet point list summary generated. And all of a sudden the behavior change happens. And this is a huge change that uh, is, is, I mean, it's, we spent multiple years building this platform with some of the current paradigms and we've adopted the new paradigms very quickly. It's a little bit of a loss in some sense. Like we thought that there was a future in the paradigm and I, I'm not saying that I think it's a bad thing necessarily. I actually think the changes for the better and it actually in the end is closer to solving the original problem that I was looking for. And one of them as an example was I have all my Evernote files in my system and I want to analyze my Evernote and query my Evernote and, and start to learn more about myself through the years of history that I've created. It. And now all of a sudden I can do that just by querying the system and asking questions about myself. And that's an amazing thing instead of looking at a bunch of keywords and sentiment and all this stuff and piecing it together. And, and so the change is positive from a technical standpoint and actually solving the core problem. I told my friend in this conversation today, it was like, had this sort of moment driving and a car is actually going to my, it was in India going to Vatsal's, the CTO of the company Speak AI's wedding. And I was like, oh my God, the problem that I started Speak AI that I originally wanted to solve with Speak AI is solved. And that was a big moment. And I was like, so now what? That was the question that I had. And it really changes your sort of paradigm when you realize something that you were so passionate about, a problem that you wanted to solve was it was solved. And it was solved by someone else. It was solved way better than the way that you had originally intended. And obviously speaking about OpenAI, but there's Cohere, there's, let me see, I'll pull a couple of them up. We've got Anthropic, OpenAI, Cohere. They just redid their website, A21 Labs, Anthropic. All these companies have done an amazing job building solutions in this space. And again, I'm glad that there was technology available to solve a problem that to me was like, ugh, it was very frustrating for not just myself personally, sometimes in business. And then what I realized was for many other people as well too. And I would even say that there were tools like Rome Research or Obsidian that were these personal development tools, no notes, Obsidian Notes, Rome Research, which had a bunch of hype because it was like linking your thoughts together. All of those were really groundbreaking at the time of how it connects your thoughts. And now it's almost, again, almost unnecessary because you can just query the information and ask what you need. And I think there is value out of the visualization element of these platforms, but I think in the end, the query part is more valuable. And there's one other one that I wanted to share was this chat base, one which was basically train chat GPT on your web data and link it to your website. So you can Got a little demo here. This is interesting. You take the URL, you plug it in, you create the chatbot, and then basically you can talk to the website. And there's different ways to customize it. You embed it directly on the website. There you go. You've got the code, add it to the website. It's live, and then you can chat. And I think we're seeing versions of this. There was one that won ooh, the event in Portugal, the big Portugal tech event that was doing the same thing with basically help docs or documentation for API where it was using LLMs and generative AI to automatically produce API documentation. And I think this is a future. You scrape a website, scrape a data set, build this sort of chat experience on it and anyone can do it. And maybe it's not on a per 
level basis like this one is where you need to manually upload it. Maybe there's an overarching plugin that's doing it automatically. I don't know. There's different ways that this sort of interaction layer is going to happen, but conversational interface is generally probably one of the most intuitive interfaces that we can have as people and seems like one of the most preferred. There's obviously audio and video and there's a lot of opportunity to hear. We've obviously seen Whisper AI and not just Whisper AI, but other speech recognition systems, but you know, that will continue to voice will continue to be democratized into these systems and make it even more back and forth. One of the other ones, Voice Flow, great company out of Toronto that you known the guy there, they have quickly adopted GPT technologies and is basically voice interaction with chatbots. And now instead of having to programmatically build it, you can just pull, push in the GPT or sort of large language models and build dynamic flows of this. Now, I think there are a lot of concerns about mm, privacy and security and all that. These are questions that we're constantly getting and we're saying, hey, we're just interacting with these systems. So it's up to them how they want to, if you want to trust them, not really want to trust us. We're pretty open that we're going to pass this information to them in some cases. Other cases, you're residing with us. But I think that's a concern. And I think we'll see what seems even coheres new messaging is about building like high performance, secure language models for enterprises. And this seems important. This seems like the reason why they've spent a lot of money invested in this, a lot of stuff on the go. People, companies want their own. They don't want to rely on, rely on open AI. There's questions about open AI. There's questions about security. I'm interested about this idea of like on-prem, on-premise large language models. I think that's going to be something that's super interesting. I've even seen some sort of demos of it, like in like small little chips and stuff where they've condensed it like even more significantly, which is pretty crazy. Overall, while there is, I think, challenges with this idea of privacy and security around it, and even open AI, they've been very savvy and quick moving forward with it. And one of those, just one of the ways that was demonstrated was this release with the ChatGPT plugins. We've joined this, wait, which basically allows you to hook into all these systems while using ChatGPT. So for example, can browse the internet, all of that. And again, ChatGPT was one thing, but now all of a sudden you've got all these plugins. You can see you ask it to do something, it will activate that plugin and you might have to activate it. It will browse, get the information that it needs and then push it back into the chat interface. I'm not having this limitation of 2021 anymore, allowing you to do some pretty crazy things. One of them being as just as an example, Zapier, ChatPHT integration, Zapier. Let's see if they have the there we go. Beautiful. Switching quick. They don't make those noises at me. You didn't hear those noises. Sorry, they're making noises. Basically, this plugin where instead of having to use technical language, so, you know, just Zapier was made relatively no code, easy to use. You don't have to be a developer, but it's still, you have to have, understand triggers and all of this stuff. But for example, now you can just say, hey, find my last email and you've got it basically right there. So all of a sudden the triggers and some of the technical knowledge even needed to require, even needed, even required to use Zapier is basically erased and can all be replaced with natural language. I think this has um, happened at a very quick speed. And what I guess I'm trying to even alliterate to is that if say security uh, is an issue and on-prem becomes a necessity or whatever, like OpenAI is a relatively dominant force in this space, I'm sure is already aware of that and already making adjustments. As one example, character limitations was a huge in the first version of even, not in the first version, but GTP3, G3.5, that limitation has been extended significantly in GPT-4. And so they're very aware of some of the bigger challenges with these systems and are already ahead of the curve. They know way more than we know. They're, they're again, executing at a high level. Sam Altman is generally considered highly intelligent. And there's a sort of a quote, I forget exactly where, you know, where it was, but it was someone saying that Paul Graham, who was the leader at Y Commander said like Sam Altman was one of the smartest people he had ever met. And so he has this sort of very calm demeanor to him. It was recently on the... Lex Fridman podcast. If you are interested, if you are like Sam, if you're like Lex, there's a good opportunity to check those two out. And it was very calm. Yeah, very calm demeanor. I think some people are critical of Lex's interview here. I actually love Lex, but I also thought some of the questions, I'm like, why are you 
spending their time on these questions or sometimes didn't dig as deep as I wanted on some. And you can't, that's, he did his best. So he always does his best, but they are definitely moving with speed. They're moving with intelligence. It's not just him. And there's obviously a great, incredible team behind it. It seems I'm sure there's a lot of people right now who are working in sort of uninspired situations, uninspired organizations who would love to work at this. So I don't think they're going to have any problems with recruiting or any or any challenges in that regard soon. So I don't think that capacity is going to slow. I don't think investment in them is going to slow. I don't think the usage is going to slow. It seems like they're building this AI for everything as everyone's talking about the AI is the new app store, all this stuff. And so I think we're just going to see continued dominance in this regard. It's not going to change. It's not going to go away anytime, anytime soon. Where does that leave me? Where does that leave you? These are questions that I have too right now. Where am I at? I'm at time. I'm interesting. I'm using uh, Descript, which I used to also be an enemy of. I thought it was a competitor of Speak AI. Such a great tool though. Basically uploading this, eliminating all the you knows and ors and ahs and all the boring stuff that I talk about very quickly so that the video is bearable or maybe even enjoyable for you. And so I'm just going to say, hey, it's 30 minutes long right now, but it might not be 30 minutes for you because all these us and stuff are cut out and so it's significantly shorter. I think I have been successful in what I would say is a random thought, a capture of mind state from me right now. I will say I'm coming off four days of pretty intense food poisoning. I'm with the positive of that is that I lost some weight. The negative of that is that I laid there like a fish <laughs> on the beach for a couple of days, just groaning and not getting things. And I think that creates its own <laughs> existential things to it. And I'm, I'm interesting, like, like many of us, I think just navigating through a lot right now and, and again, a lot of times I'm navigating sometimes difficultly through life situations, but I have some clarity on things on the other side, whereas between financial, macro environment, culture, what's going on, some of these tech things that are going on, it's hard to see where we're headed right now. I think to me, what I, from what I'm reading, a lot of people feel this way and that sometimes makes me feel better. Sometimes that makes it worse. I'm not sure where it leaves me <laughs> in this case, but I hope that I can continue to share. I hope I can continue to share valuable things. I hope that this sort of random thoughts version of this was interesting to you if you did choose to watch it. And I hope I can get back to creating some individual more focused videos on specific as they come to me. And I have a pipeline of them. I just, I want to do a better job at them. And I think that's now blocking me mentally from just doing it because I, for example, what is prompt engineering? I didn't expect that to uh, I didn't expect that to be such a big video, 20,000 views and one of the biggest drivers for me. And all of a sudden I'm like, this is not even that good quality. And so many people saw it. And then I do have some people complaining about the quality. And so there's ramifications to putting out a video that is not that great a quality. And so dealing with that, working through it, I'll figure it out. I have a bunch of stuff in the pipeline here right now. I'm looking at some titles, some stuff on pitching, some stuff on tax credits, investment. I got some, why am I not going to Burning Man? I still have a bunch of stuff on India. I got a drone. I got some video titles around that India. And then I got some questions that people asked about India, which I don't still don't know if I feel like I have the right to say or not. I also have, I could just create videos on the experience in India, but no one's really asking me for those besides a couple of close friends. I'm not sure if that's enough, how much work that could be what I'm personally going to get out of it or what you're going to get out of it. I've got a monetization on YouTube on, which is fantastic. I've made like maybe $50, which is awesome. I would like to make much more. I have a goal, a public goal setting. And the ideal for me is that I could actually make 250 K on YouTube in a year. Do I know how I'm going to achieve that? Am I moving towards that right now? Nah, maybe slowly. I'm, at least I'm creating this video, but I don't think this video is going to have that much of an impact on this. If I actually want, that's the goal and I need to move towards that much more systematically, creating more constantly, creating higher quality and a lot of things I need to do to make that successful. The other thought, maybe dark one that I shared with Monica, maybe it's not, maybe it's positive, but it was like, was Monica, my partner is maybe life will just be more mediocre than I thought. And I think when you're young, you're told that you can do anything. You watch all these movies, you have these big grandiose ambitions. I'd be a hockey star. I thought I'd be a rap star. I thought I'd be a successful entrepreneur and technology developer and all this stuff. And now I'm turning 31 this year and I've accomplished a lot. I'm happy with a lot of things, but overall that, that, that vision has not really been realized. And I'm not sure on the trajectory that I'm on that's going to happen 
And I think maybe there's some peace in recognizing that. Maybe your perspective changes. Your priorities definitely change. I felt that. And I also got some great input from Monica who said because of her upbringing, like that wasn't always her priority. It wasn't really because she came from such, she grew up in a, a rural, relatively poor village in India. And so for her to make it where she is now, that is the dream. And I guess maybe because I was lucky in, in where I, I started in some cases, not all cases, there's been lots of reasons that's not necessarily true, that the vision was so high that the fact that I haven't reached that feels more sad. Whereas she has achieved that. She's a hero. She's a, a inspiration for me because of how much she's accomplished, especially when you compare it to the starting point. That's just a thought that I'm also thinking about, especially as I plan out on a higher level, what does my life look like? What am I prioritizing? What am I doing? How do I want to proceed? What is happiness? How do these changes in the world affect me and how do I adapt to them? How do I think about them? How do I remain happy? All of these things as we get through life. And if you have any thoughts, love to hear them. I appreciate anyone who checked out this video, who stuck with me. I'm guessing there's not going to be too many of you who made it this far. So if you did, I love you very much. I thank you for being here. I know it's, I keep saying it was an interesting time we're in. It's a weird time we're in. It's a wild time we're in. And this, even this channel, this video has been really nice to create and just have some connections sometimes. Um, and so if you did, send me a message. That'd be nice. Great to hear from you. As always, Tyler Bryden, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.